In this video, we'll be focusing on the team headquarters, Gantt. As you recall from our previous video, we added a project called the Team Headquarters Implementation. Let's take a look at that project by clicking on the Projects button, and we'll get to the Projects Grid. And as you can see, we have no open or closed tasks in here, so let's open this up and click on our Gantt tab. We can see right off the hop that there is one item in here, which is the project uh, title. And we can see a couple other things, right? We can see when the start date of this project is. And, uh, and, and let's start adding items and doing some work here. But before we do that, let's just take a quick uh, tour of the product and explain what these buttons do. So the first one is the refresh button. If we add an item to this list and we do a bunch of work to it, we're not happy with it, we can actually click on this. And if we do this before we save it, it'll just reload whatever is in the database at that time. Once we save it, however, then refreshing it will just bring back what we've already saved. When we want to add a new item, it adds a new item to the bottom when you click on this little plus button here. So you could add items and uh, they'll add to the bottom. If you click on the next button, it'll say it'll add before the item that was highlighted. So we were highlighted on number one, we clicked on this, and so our task number two came before number one. Uh, this is our decrease and, and increase indentation. So we can we can click on an item and we can say, let's just uh, increase the, the indentation. We'll get a message and it'll tell us about it. So we're gonna indent that. And, uh, and then we can go ahead and decrease the selected indent. We can do that and we can say, you know what, let's just take a look at this. Let's reload from the database and we'll say, okay. And we're back here to a fresh clean screen because this is the last thing that was saved to the database. Uh, the next button is going to be about deleting. So we can delete items from here. So if we add an item, just highlight the item and then we can delete it. This is uh, all about moving your viewing window. Over here on the right-hand side, we've got a viewing window which starts at uh, 0126. And uh, if we take a look at this, it says the, uh, the start of this project is 0123. So let's uh, just uh, change the viewing window. We'll just click this and there we go. There's our, our item right there. So there's our, our first date. And uh, the next is to move your viewing window towards the future, right? So this is your zoom in and zoom out functions, which changes how many days you're looking at in a view. This is our critical path. When we turn this on, our items will be critical paths. So let me just add an item here and we'll see that when we turn this on, we have one item, so it's the critical path item. It's red. If we turn this off, the critical path item is not shown. Our next button is to enable or disable automatic scheduling. Uh, and what this does is that if you have a long project, many hundreds of or maybe even thousands of items in it, each time you add an item and select the date for it, it will put it onto the Gantt chart and it'll automatically schedule all the items that are after it and uh, before it perhaps. Um, and so this can actually really add to the amount of time that you have to wait. So if you don't want to wait, you just have to click that button and disable the automatic scheduling. We're taking a look at a start and an end date here. And this really has to do with your print function. So when we click on this, we say we'd like to see the start of this project to be around 0123 and the end 0208. And then when we print the Gantt and it goes to our PDF form, uh, that is the date range that it will actually use. When you add items to the project, you will end up with a few additional features. And this will give you a warning saying that there are items that you've added that have not been saved. So there's your save button and then there's your cancel changes. So we can just cancel those changes and it goes back to the, the latest revisions very similar to the refresh. And the final button is we can click on the full screen Gantt so we can get more of a view. This is the view that we're gonna work in. Let's add a few items to our project. So we're going to add uh, four items to our project and these are gonna be uh, our initiation phase, our execution, our control, and our closing. 
Uh, it's just for fun. We're just going to add a few other items in here. So we're going to say under initiation, we want to do a, a project charter and some staffing. So we're just going to add a couple of more items. Oh, we, did, we don't want to add that there. So we're just going to delete that. We want to add just before execution, we want to add two items, one and two. And so this is going to be about uh, uh, chartering. And this is going to be about staffing. And then we're going to go down into execution. We're going to add a couple of items in there. Right? And we're going to go into implementation. And we're going to go into training. And into control, we can add a couple of items in here. And we'll put in here status updates. And closing, we'll just use our add to the bottom. And we'll say that we, what we want to do here is we want to document and close. All right, so now our project is, is all kind of structured, but it's a bit flat. So we're just going to take and uh, we're going to start to indent some items here. So we're going to start off by indenting our charter process. And we'll also indent our staffing process. Implementation needs to be indented underneath execution and training and then control. We have our status updates and we'll say OK to that. And under closing, we'll take our document and close and we'll indent that. All right. So we've got a very flat project where everything happens on the same day, but that's not really how it's going to happen. Let's just open this up a little bit more and we can see that we've got some more information here. We've got work hours and we've got duration. You can see that there's a lighter grayed out items and these are the top line items. So we can see right now that we have 48 hours. Uh, everything gets added. When you add an item, it adds it for eight hours and one day. And so what we can do is we can change all of those. So we can say the chartering process is going to take us, um, well, it's going to take us a day and the staffing process will take us only four hours. So we're going to say four hours, and we're going to say that's going to take 0.5 of a day. But that really can't happen until the first process is done. So, all right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to give ourselves a little bit more space here. And we can see that uh, our staffing process will come after our chartering process. So we want to set a predecessor to that. And so we'll just go over here and say, all right, so item number two has to be completed before number three. So we're our predecessor here is number two, right? And we can see automatically what has happened in our graph and our Gantt graph is that it's connected the dots together. We know that uh, staffing and chartering needs to happen before we do implementation. So we can see that our staffing process is number three. Implementation cannot happen until number three is completed, right? And we move that and then Number uh, five has to happen before that. And our status updates, they're not really connected. They can happen anytime during the process, but we know that documenting and closing the product the project cannot happen until after training. So we'll put that in here as number six. And so that is going to drop into our Gantt out there. So we can see how that works. All right, so we can also say that our status updates uh, they may only be eight hours long, but they're for the for full duration of the project. So we're going to say that that takes five days to execute. All right, so now when we turn on our critical path, we can see what critical path items. And because this is the longest one without any breaks and has no slack time built into it, it's going to calculate it as our critical path item, and which is not really true. So we're just going to turn that off and um, not worry about that very much. All right, so here's some of the other things that we can do is that we can actually take an item in here and we can move it this way so that it would actually update all throughout the system. And we can, when we click on the update button, it will update it all. And what we can also do is we can consider some things milestones. So if we can click, if we click on anything with a milestone, you'll see that it will change the way that it looks um, and uh, you can't add time to that. So Let's just undo that, uh, or let's just change that out a little bit and say that really does take one day, and we're just going to let that be there like that. All right, and we'll take a look at any other items that are in our Gantt, and you can see 
right now there's nobody assigned to anything. So so let's go ahead and get that to happen. So we're going to take our, our first item here, which is our chartering process, and we're going to assign that to a project manager and a business leader. All right, so let's do that by clicking on either the WBS number or the item number. And this opens up. Oh, it's going to say we haven't saved it yet, so we better do that. Save that. All right, so now we have a critical path that actually makes some sense. And we'll go in here. And we'll open that up. So the purpose of the task, we can add as much detail here as we want. This box will expand to meet our requirements. Estimated time on the task is eight hours. Um, it starts on January the 24th. That makes no sense. So we probably want to change that start date. Um, we can go back here and we can actually do that and say, you know, it really doesn't start on that date. It's going to start on February the 3rd. Let's move that out. And this process down here really doesn't start until February the 3rd either. So let's do that. All right. So we can see that our, our Gantt changed quite a bit. Everything got moved forward because our start date of our project was really not until February the, uh, the 3rd. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, go back to our, our, our tab here with our item. And let's close that and actually refresh it. So we're just gonna open that up again, our chartering process. And here we go. So it starts on the right date. Duration is one day. Constraint is as soon as possible. Let's uh, put in a purpose of this uh, task is to going to be to define the project uh, in scope and out of scope items. All right, and let's add somebody to that. What we want to do is we want to add Josephine Francie, who is our project manager, and we want her to be on that for four hours, and we want to update that. We're also going to add a business leader, and so the business leader for that area is Susan Brown. So we're going to add Susan to that, and we're going to put her on for four hours. And now we have the total amount of time associated with this task is eight hours. State is open. Priority is two. Risk is low. Work classes, plans, skill required. We can add that if we'd like to. And that is set up by the system admin. And we're going to save those changes. And we can see right away that we've got some people associated with that task. And then as we go through here, we can also see that they're in the text area of the Gantt as well. All right, and we would just continue to go through this whole process. Let's go down to the uh, staffing process. And this is one that is gonna be done just by Josephine because she is the, the project manager. So we'll go down here and say, Josephine is gonna do that for four hours. Now let's take a look at what we see here. Uh, we can see that out of Josephine's 40 hours, she has 28 hours available. Um, if I had zero in here, she should have 32. All right, she's got 32 available. And we're going to put four hours in here, and we're going to update it. And so everything else gets uh, saved as normal, and we're save those changes. And now we see that Josephine is on this task for four hours. All right, we just continue to do that as we go through our project, and we set it up, and, um, and then we save it. We save that project at the end. Here's what happens. As we've added these folks to these tasks, they're getting notified uh, that they are on these tasks. So we're just gonna go ahead and close this normal view. These tasks are gonna show up in their My Tasks area. And so they'll have these sorts of things show up and they'll have a charter and they'll, they'll know what they need to do because the description has been typed into the charter as to what it's, what it's all about. And that pretty well covers it off for the Gantt and task assignment. What we're going to do now is we're going to create another video that goes into the import of Microsoft Project Files and the export of the Team Headquarters Gantt into a Microsoft Project File. So join me for that video.